Good morning, happy Wednesday to you, and welcome to DCC Today, our Monday, Wednesday, and Friday program of information and encouragement for the Dungeness Community Church family and anybody else that wants to watch. We start with a photo of the day, and today the photo was sent by Andy Davidson. And Andy, I'm not positive, I think this is Port Ludlow. I really haven't been down there to their marina that much, but I think this is a picture from Port Ludlow. Uh, Whatever it is, it is a beautiful picture, and thank you so much for sharing it. Our announcements for the week. Uh, this Sunday, don't forget, we're starting a new teaching series called Faith Has Feet. We're going to be working through the book of James this summer, and so that begins this week. And we're going to have Rod Carlson uh, taking us through the book of James as a dramatic recitation. Uh, if you've heard Rod before, he does a great job with this. I think you're going to really enjoy it. So I hope you'll tune in. You can get it online at 10 a.m., starting at 10 a.m. It's available, of course, all day from then on. But online, it starts at 10 a.m., or you can view it on Wave Cable Channel 21 at 12 noon. And uh, then let's see. Round to it. Round to it. We've got one today that was sent by Joyce Blankenship. And here's what Joyce says. She says, last week, I finally got around to clearing out and organizing my greenhouse. There was nine years of accumulated, no longer needed stuff. A half dozen pots with plants that didn't make it, as well as dozens of plastic nursery pots that I had hoped to recycle. Additionally, several weeds that came up through the gravel floor had grown up through the slats of the shelves. No more weeds, and now I have room to plant my tomatoes and strawberries. Well, Joyce, congratulations on cleaning out the greenhouse and uh, mm, tomatoes and strawberries. That sounds pretty good. I hope you get a good harvest from that. Congratulations on getting around to it. Yeah! Our devotional thought comes from Matthew 18:33. And it's in the context of this parable that Jesus told about a king who had a servant who couldn't repay a debt. And uh, the servant begged for forgiveness, the king forgave him, but then that servant in turn had another servant who owed him some money who also could not pay it back. And rather than forgiving him, the servant had his friend thrown into a debtor's prison. And when the king found out, he was pretty upset. And here's what the king has to say. I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? Forgiveness to me is such an important topic. People live lives that are poisoned by unforgiveness because they will not release the wounds of the past. And when we talk about what is forgiveness, I have found this parable tremendously helpful. Because when we say, well, what does it mean to say, I forgive you? you I still feel the pain. I still feel the loss. I think about it like someone who owes a financial debt. When you forgive the debt, it means that you accept the loss. It, you write it off. You recognize you're never going to get that money back and you stop trying to get it. You stop demanding payment. I think emotionally, oftentimes, when people have hurt us, we go through life looking for ways to make them pay it back. And the fact is, they're never going to be able to pay it back. Probably not to your satisfaction. And if you become the collection agent for all of those wrongs, it will consume your heart. What Jesus calls us to do is to give to others what he has given to us, which is the gift of forgiveness, to write it off and to let them go and accept the loss. But in accepting the loss, there also is freedom. So, I don't know about you. I don't know if there's something you've been holding on to. Maybe it's something new that just happened, or maybe it's something that's been there for a long time. But I want to encourage you to forgive as you have been forgiven, and let it go. Well, Jennifer, who do we have today for an interview? 
Okay, hello everyone. Our guests today on DCC Today are Scott and Donalyn Culver, and they are here to give us a little update on life um, since Scott retired as our lead pastor and just catch us up. And it's just good to see you guys today and, and talk with you today. So we'll just start with a little background. Why don't you give us a little background about yourselves? Because not everybody knows you now. So yeah, fill us in. Okay. Uh, well, I was <clears throat> born to missionary parents in Taiwan and uh, grew up in the Philippines after uh, living in Taiwan for a while. And then after about five years in the Philippines, we moved to the U.S. and uh, spent time in Southern California uh, as a kid in Pasadena. And eventually moved up to the Bay Area and lived in Palo Alto, uh, graduated from high school there and graduated from Taylor University. And uh, eventually, in 1977, uh, we came up to the state of Washington. And my uh, involvement with the church uh, was fairly significant. I spent 20 years here as uh, Neil's associate pastor. And uh, those are very good, rich years for me. Um, Neil had been my uh, youth pastor when I was in high school. And... Um, wow got to know him uh, way back then. And so it was a, a real kind of a, a surprise to find that uh, he had moved up to uh, this area as well. And to, um, I never would have guessed that we would have been uh, pastoring together at a church. So 20 years with Neil as the associate pastor. Um, and uh, I, I, I wish Melanie and the family well. Uh, Neil just became a dear friend, and we loved him, and, um, and he was just a great guy to, uh, to work with. Um, and then after, uh, after Neil retired, we, uh, became, I became the lead pastor here, was lead pastor for eight years uh, until my retirement. Yes, we remember when DCC began because we were actually living in Port Angeles. Scott was the youth pastor of an independent Bible church for five years and then um, went on to Regent College um, and then got to come back to Squim. And how did you two meet each other? <laughs> That's a great story. We actually met working in a summer camp up at the Firs in Bellingham at Camp Furwood. Oh, Camp yeah. Furwood, wow, okay. And that was just over 50 years ago. <laughs> I was I was 17 years old and and uh, had just broken up with a girlfriend so I was actually through with women and I was going to go up to this camp and just be there all summer and just you know be rough and rugged and all that and uh, be on the work crew there um, dressing trails and cutting down trees and things like that uh, and then I met Donnelly the rest is history. Um, oh, so Donnelly, give us a little bit of your background. Um, I was born in Canada, um, actually in Vancouver, um, and my parents have been coming down with us. Um, we have, I have three siblings um, to the Furs, um, and so that was how we got coming across the border. And then um, I went to Camp Furwood and as a child and then met Scott. I was 17 also, and we got married at the Furs, actually, when we were 20. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. On memories. Yes. When my son Sam was in middle school, they went to Camp Furwood, actually, for um, when he was in sixth grade, I think it was. Yeah. Hmm. And never unpacked a thing. The whole time he was there, he wore a swimsuit <laughs> from the day one to day <laughs> six or seven. <laughs> That's really cute. Uh, well, one of our children actually met her spouse at Camp Furwood also. So. Oh, it's a fun place then. Yeah. 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 Well, how about, um, I'd love for you to share with us a little bit about what life has looked like since um, you stepped down from being the lead pastor, Scott, and Donnelly, too. Um, what's life looked like after that? Yeah, so uh, for me, um, uh, in retirement, you know, was a a new and wondrous kind of thing, and it took me a while to adjust and get used to that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I am working, have been working over the last four years part time at the lodge, which is uh, uh, an elderly 
um, facility indep for independent living uh, elderly people that are in, not ready yet for assisted living or for nursing homes. And uh, I do that. I work there for about 27 hours uh, a month. So it's not a lot, but uh, it's enough to keep me involved in some things. I have dear friends over there. Um, I also uh, spend a lot of time in the garden. We have a pretty big garden and we rely on it for, um, you know, lots of uh, good vegetables. And so uh, I enjoy doing that. And we're on an acre and a quarter and there's plenty of yard work to do. It's an amazing amount, actually. We have lots of trees and things. So there's always something uh, that needs to be done. So I do that, but also uh, it's, it's, retirement has given me an opportunity to get back to doing art that I was doing in high school and a little bit in college, uh, and then had to put it all kind of on the shelf uh, for many years. And now I've been able to go back to that, pick that up again. So in the last um, well, four or so, five, four or five years, um, I have uh, gone back to painting and have done two oil paints and 40 plus uh, watercolor uh, paintings. Wow. So that's, that's been really rewarding. Yes. We both love to read. And so uh, we spend a lot of time reading. Um, and one of the things I have now that I didn't have in the past, I actually have time to, in my leisure, to read uh, in the Greek New Testament and in the Hebrew Old Testament. So, I, you know, I'm not preparing for a sermon or a Bible study or anything like that. It's just, uh, you know, very enjoyable and, and rich. So I really, uh, I really love doing that. And I also am a guitar owner. <laughs> owner. <laughs> Any lessons or... Uh, I don't give lessons. I should take lessons. <laughs> I'm a I'm a plinker. I only play from for myself. No one oh, else. Me. And me, I enjoy it. Yeah. We also like to play outside. <laughs> and thanks to Tim and Burnett, we are the happy owners of two kayaks. So we do oh. kayaking. We love to go camping. Um, we've been down to Sisters, Oregon area to Yellowstone, fishing, hiking, and trips with our family and our children and grandchildren. Um, so, and how many grandchildren do you guys have now? We have 16, Jennifer. Um, wow. God has really blessed us. We have a son and three daughters, and they are all married. Our son actually has um, a, a very special family. Um, they have adopted three children. They have two children living with them right now who are in the adoption courts, and they have two other children who they would love to keep. They, our grandchildren range at age from 19 down to eight months. Each of our daughters has three children. Um, and so we have spent a lot of time during this time trying to stay in touch with each of them. And um, one of the things that we do is we like to write letters. And you know what? We're getting letters back. It's really oh, nice. Little <laughs> tiny seven-year-olds and six-year-olds are writing to us and it's it's just a really special time. But we do Marco Polo and we Skype and we um, text and get texts back. That's another thing we do. And so we just really try hard to stay in touch with them and pray for them, of course, on a regular basis. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, long for the day when we'll get to see them again face to face. Yeah. Well, and when six and seven year olds write letters, that's significant because it takes them a long time to write. Yeah. To write. It that's does. a big deal. So that's awesome that they are Very willing special. to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, so how have you been able to, well, you mentioned a few ways you've been connecting with your family during quarantine. I, I assume probably, yeah, you haven't really been able to see them a whole lot. So Skyping, is that kind of when you, how you've been seeing them and talking to them? And Marco Polo, which is kind of a fun thing too, because they can talk and we can, you know, respond and Okay. I haven't heard of that one, actually. That's a new one for me. So, yeah. <laughs> and you're trading, you're trading video Videos. tapes yeah. um, back and forth. So oh. you don't have to catch somebody, you know, at, at, or everybody at the same time at the same moment. You don't have to coordinate like that. Okay. So you send them something and then they record and send it back. Is that what mm -hmm. you, oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I guess in wrapping up, 
um, any words of wisdom for us or words of encouragement um, as we've gone into our, what is this, our two and a half, three months of quarantine? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lots of, uh, lots of things, um, you know, have been, uh, lots of things have been going on in our, you know, in our country. I think we're, we're feeling, um, you know, lots of new pressures that uh, maybe are sort of like a perfect storm coming together. You know, we have international tensions, we have political uh, tensions and frustrations and conflicts. We have a pandemic that we're faced with. Um, we have societal issues going on right now that are uh, very troubling and disturbing, um, you know, throughout uh, our nation. And my heart really um, goes out to folks that are uh, struggling with their emotions, uh, uh, feeling uh, discouraged, feeling uh, depressed or anxious, um, these are days of real uncertainty. We don't know how some of these things are going to end up and how they're going to play out. And uh, so my heart goes out to them. And in thinking about that, uh, I would just encourage people, if you're uh, feeling that way, to not bottle it up inside. Um, seek out a friend. Uh, I did that this morning. Uh, I, I get together with Gary Stack and uh, we have an interesting relationship and a background. We both married Canadians, and then the comparisons go on and on and on. Uh, <laughs> we both were at the same seminary, and uh, anyway, um, Gary's a, a good buddy of mine, and we, we love to share with each other about our lives and uh, listen to each other and encourage each other and counsel each other, and uh, that's very meaningful. In fact, we did that this morning. Uh, so I hope you have um, and reach out to some people around you that you can share with and that are good listeners. Uh, this is also, I think, a time when we really need to stay focused in the Word and have our ears open to the Lord. Um, the scriptures are, are tremendously powerful and helpful in terms of providing us with hope and with truth. And um, it's... Uh, uh, it's, it's God's means of strengthening us and encouraging us through, through those words. And so this is a time for reading in the scriptures, a time for prayer as well. And um, I, I would just encourage uh, any of you who are, are feeling that way to pursue those things and, and um, allow God to strengthen you through brothers and sisters, but also through his word and also in prayer. It's in, in prayer that we, we find and hear God's voice. Uh, so often he gives us answers and directions and, and thoughts. Um, so that's what's been on my heart. And God's our Heavenly Father. He knows where we are. He knows what our families are. He cares. And um, there's a verse that I have loved for several years, and I just wanted to share it. It's Zephaniah 317. The Lord your God is in your midst. A mighty one who will save. And I know there's one translation that calls him a mighty warrior, which I love that imagery. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. That's beautiful. I really thank you guys for sharing with us today. It was just, it felt like home. <laughs> it was just good to hear from you and get a little update and, um, Thank you for those words, because I think we all need them. My son, Sam, actually right now is um, in downtown Squim doing peaceful protesting about the um, Black Lives Matter. Um, so even at that age, there's a lot of um, uncertainty and just confusion about things that we've dealt with for a long time in our country. But um, I was actually really proud of him that he's willing to, you know, that can be a scary thing to be out there, but, um, but, but he wants to do it peacefully, you know, but, but to make a difference. So, um, but it is key to be in the word during that time so that you don't go off, off stray with that. But yeah. Um, so I, I appreciate that being in the word piece because that's really important. Yeah, but thank you for sharing. And I will ask if one of you would be willing to close us in prayer as we go out today. That'd be great. Okay. 
Father, I just thank you for uh, being um, our creator and uh, ruler of the universe, our heavenly father, um, our shepherd. And uh, you know the, the things that we are faced with. Um, and you have the strength uh, to give us, the power to give us by, by your spirit. And we, uh, we just thank you for your goodness. Pray that we would, uh, in these troubled times, uh, continue to have thankful hearts. We pray that you would uh, allow us to experience your joy and your uh, peace, even in the midst of difficulty. And I do pray that you would give us um, a friend to uh, share our concerns and our burdens with and allow us to be uh, those willing to listen um, on the other side of that as well. And Heavenly Father, help us to remember that you are always with us, that you have not forgotten our country and the people in it, and you, um, you love us so much, and we ask that you would um, just help us to remember that, that you know where we are, you know our circumstances, and you are bigger than them. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks again for sharing. Appreciate it so much. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for joining us. I trust that you have a good Wednesday and uh, we will see you again on Friday.